Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn how to rotate and scale an AR object using our hand gestures. So we're going to choose an augmented reality app template and make sure you use reality kit as the content technology. Awesome! So first step, I'm just going to delete all the template code that came with it. We're going to divide this project into three steps. Number one, we're going to create the 3D model. And number two, we're going to place the sphere. And number three, we're going to install gestures so that we could rotate and scale the sphere. Let's create these functions one by one. So I'm going to first create a function for creating the box, create box. And this would not take any input parameters, but it would return a model entity. So for this, let's first create the mesh, i.e. the geometric shape of the box. I'm going to store this in box and I'm going to use mesh resource dot generate box with size about 0.5, which is 50 centimeters. Now I'm going to add a material to this box. So I'm going to create a box material and this would be a simple material. And the color, let's make it say blue. And then the roughness would be zero and is metallic. Do you want it to shine, be shiny? I'm going to make it true. And now that we have the mesh and the material, we can create a model entity out of this, which is needed for ARK to function. So let's create a box entity. This would be a model entity, which we can initialize with a mesh, which is the box and a material, multiple materials, but in this case, just one. So we're going to use the box material we just created. Now we're going to return this box entity. Great, so this function creates a box, adds a material, and returns this as a model entity, which we can use to insert into the ARC. So that's the create box function. Now let's just call it here by first creating a variable called box, which would be a box model entity. Awesome. Now step two, we need to place this box onto a location in the real world. So for this, I'm going to create another function, and this would be called place box. And this would take as input the box, which is a model entity, and then the position in the world where we want to place it at. So this would be a 3D vector. And now in here, we need to do two things. First, we need to create the anchor, which is like a hook that locks a virtual object onto a specific point in the real world. And then we need to tie the 3D model onto the anchor, and then finally add both of these into the scene. So first let's create the anchor. So I'm going to create box anchor. And this would be an anchor entity, which we can define at a world position. So this would be the position where we want the box to be at. In this case, let's just create it at the center of the screen. So it will be floating in the air. So I'm going to create a 3D vector. And the X, Y, Z coordinates of this would be 0, 0, 0. So this would create an anchor at the center of the scene. Next, let's add the 3D model, which would be this, onto the anchor. So for that, we'll choose box anchor and add child the model entity. So this would be the box. Next thing, what we want to do is add this anchor to the scene. So for that, I'm going to get AR view and then get access to the scene and add anchor and this would be the box anchor. So the AR scene can have multiple anchors. For example, this is the box anchor to place the box in, but we could have a different anchor to place something else in a different location. And each anchor could have multiple objects attached to it. So there was a mistake here. In the position here, we want to pass on this position, which is the input of the function argument. Wrong thing done here. So this would be the position. And then what we can do is in the viewed load method, now here we can call the place box function. The model we want to place is this box and the position we want to place it at, we can define here. So I'm going to create a 3D vector here and this would be x, y, z, 0, 0, 0. So this function places the box model at the center of the screen. Now we want to interact with it by scaling and rotating it using our gestures. So let's create a function for that now. Create a new function called install gestures. And this would take as input an object which we want to install the gestures on. So this would be of type model entity. In here, first thing we want to do is we want to take this object and add 
collision boxes to it. So what this would do is it would add collision boxes around this 3D model, which is needed for uh, gestures to work. Then we're going to take the AR view, install gestures, and this method's not being recognized. And that's because we're using a simulator. And for this to work, we need to either choose any iOS device or an actual device. So I'm going to choose any iOS device. Now it's fine. Now if I try this again, AR view and dot install gestures. Great, it's working. So with this method, it essentially simplifies everything. It simply installs the gestures we define here onto an object which has the collision component, which we generated here. So here, the gestures we want to recognize are rotation and scale. Which object do we want to add these gestures on? This would be the object here, the model entity, i.e. the box. So now if we call this install gestures function here and install the gestures on the box model, now what it will do is this box becomes interactable. I, you can rotate it and scale it using your fingers. So that's it, very simple. We created a box 3D model, placed it at the center of the screen using this method, and then we installed gestures on that box.